weddings. Of course, all of the COVID restrictions and lockdowns that have made micro weddings such a trend have also caused a lot of brides to have their dream wedding postponed. So our very own Deepa Prashad is one of those brides. Her wedding has been postponed four times, y'all. She joins me now to talk about what the last year has been like. <laughs> Deepa, let's start with what the original vision was for your wedding. Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me on to share my sorrows because this has been a whirlwind of experience. <laughs> Originally, um, it was going to be a really unique and endearing ceremony and celebration because we were going to be uh, mixing together religions and traditions. So my fiance Talal, he's Muslim. His family is from Pakistan. I'm Hindu. My family's from Guyana. So we're going to mix together all those traditions. We were going to mix together different parts of the religion into the ceremony. And our family would have been coming in from Guyana and Pakistan. But I'm not sure if that part can happen right now. Um, and on top of that, our weddings are huge. We were going to have mm -hmm. four different events leading up to it. So the first ceremony is called the Haldi ceremony. And that's typically when the bride and groom are dyed in turmeric and milk. It's meant to like purify and cleanse your skin. So it's nice and radiant for your wedding day. Um, we were going to have a Sangeet night, which is a musical evening. So you'd have family come over. You'd sing songs. You'd eat food, by the way. Food is of the <laughs> utmost importance to us. Guyanese fusion, Pakistani infusion, um, best combination that you could probably get. So um, then we would have had the ceremony and the reception. So we're just kind of like, what's going on now? And it's been <laughs> very, very difficult to plan. I remember chatting with you when we were covering the Grammys, okay? And uh, like, I am so excited for you. And I know you're going to figure out a way to make it very special. It sounds like you had an amazing event planned. How did you feel when you realized that that big wedding wasn't going to happen, Deepa? Yeah, it was really tough at first because, again, like you mentioned, we postponed it four times. And every time we postponed it, it was like, ah, like, how long do we have to do this for? And, and a bit of a backstory, Talal and I, my fiance, we've actually known each other since we were 12 years old. Oh. We knew each other since middle school. It, it just seems like it's been a really long time coming. And at one point, we were just like, look, it doesn't matter, you know, how many guests we can have and how big it can be. Let's just get married because at the end of the day, that's all that we should really focus on. And I think with a situation like this, I mean, it's tough when you have to change constantly, but you kind of have to look at the positive side of things, the positive spin on things. So for us, we were like, okay, we have to postpone, but we both uh, still lived with our parents and we're like, okay, we're going to stay home. We're going to save more money so that when we actually get married, we have more money to spend or, you know, like to start our lives together. So that was a silver lining that we had to look at. Oh, my gosh. Yes. My advice to every child is stay home as long as possible. Put that money away, yes. kids. Stay with yes. mommy and daddy if they will have you. So I need to talk about money 100%. a little bit more with you, because what happens with deposits and arrangements that you've already made? And does it become a battle to get those down payments back? Yeah, it does. It's very unlikely that vendors or these venues will give you your deposit back. So one thing that we learned, especially going into this, was it's so important to pick the venues, pick the vendors that you 100 percent want to work with. And for us, we are paying for everything on our own um, because we want to do it exactly the way that we want to. And we were from the get go like, OK, we have to be solid together in this decision so that in the case that we have to switch anything, it becomes less of a headache because you know for sure you want to go forward with this venue or these vendors and they're pretty flexible in terms of switching their schedules around and working with the dates that you want and I think one piece of advice that I would have is when you're booking a venue for the reception because that's typically the largest event we went with an event called uh with an event center called Scarborough Convention Center. And they've been so awesome, so accommodating. And the reason we went with them is because we got a full package. So the venue, uh, all the food, they have so many food options to choose from, decor. They have like pages and pages of photos that you can choose from. So that way we're really limiting the vendors that uh, we're booking. So it's very, very easy to coordinate with just one specific uh, person looking over all those things. And they really stick to your budget, which is amazing. So I think that's one of the best options that you can choose to really like reduce your headaches during this entire thing. Oh, that is a good piece of advice. So your original wedding was supposed to take place November 2020, then February 2021 than April. So what is the plan now, my friend? What are you like? What's the date? <laughs> I'm just crying over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> September 4th is the day that we 
we're going forward with September 4, 2021. And regardless of, uh, again, how many people we can have, we're just going to go forward with that. Um, I'm super excited because my dresses have been planned. So baby steps, we'll get there and we will get married in September. <laughs> Yes, you will. And I have good, like, I have a good feeling. I have a good feeling about fall. I really, really do. So, I hope so. Uh, yes, yes, I'm with you. And I'm so excited for your outfits too. My goodness. So what advice would you give brides in the same situation as you, uh, Deepa, uh, if they are sort of rethinking their wedding in times of a pandemic? What can you tell them? Yeah, I know it's really tough. Like I, I know firsthand that it's been a real struggle, but I think the main thing is know to yourself, what do you really want to do? You know, do you want to postpone it because celebrating with your family is so important? Or are you like us? And at that point, you're just like, hey, we're going to go forward with it because we need to get married. We need to start our lives. So that's my first tip. And the second one is uh, do not send your save your dates out too early because that's <laughs> what I did. I was so excited. I was like, here's my save the dates. Talal was much better. He was patient with it, but not me. So I actually had to message people and be like, you might not be able to come. I'm so <laughs> sorry. So <laughs> just avoid that and people will understand. <laughs> I think that's great advice. Don't be so organized. Just stop yeah. it. Like, just don't be on yes. top of it all. You never know. <laughs> Things might change, Deepa. Thank you so much. I am wishing you the best for your big day or big days. And I think it's going to be absolutely phenomenal when it finally happens. And I will expect to see all of it posted on Instagram because that's where I follow you, girl. Yes. Good luck. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be all right.